Hi, this is Woman Grandmaster Dina Belinka for the 52nd Build Chess Festival 2019. I would like to show you a very interesting game from the round number 6 against two grandmasters, Sebastian Bogner from Switzerland and Sam Shanklin from United States. The game started with d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, c takes d5, knight takes d5, e4, knight c3, b takes c3, bishop g7, knight f3, c5, bishop b5. Grunfeld defense so far, we have seen some theoretical moves and now I would like to show you the very first critical moment of uh, this game. As Sam says, he should have been an adult and uh, should have played knight c6, which would be a um, the um, the most important, the most um, the most normal, or better say, the the line that uh, equalizes here with black. But Sam wanted to create some fire on the board and uh, to use his chances of having black color in order to fight for a win, which is not so uh, easy to to do, by the way, or at least easier to say than to do. All right, um, we should know that according to Sam, it was a very terrible game, and uh, this might give you some uh, extra um, extra interest to continue uh, this video course. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Black decided to play uh, Bishop d7. Bishop e2, very interesting and very strong uh, answer from uh, white side. Here, if white can uh, develop with uh, short castle and bishop e3, uh, he should be better. So black thought he should try uh, to do something like queen a5 that happened in the game. Uh, although c takes d4 would be another option to continue um, the... Uh, fight for equality here in this position because uh, uh, queen e5 is clearly a dubious move. We will see why it uh, somehow ruined the position of uh, black. Bishop d2, short castle, short castle, rook d8. One more a dubious move for black because here actually um, black should have tried uh, to do something like uh, Queen e4, which happened uh, previously in the game of uh, two strong players, uh, Maisenka and Swidler. But as Sam mentioned uh, later on uh, after the game, he could not remember exactly what would happen after Queen b1. And now, because of uh, knight c6, bishop b5, Queen a3, d5. Uh, this should be very, very strong for white. So Sam did not like this variation and uh, decided to play uh, rook d8. So eventually the game proceeded with rook d8. And here after queen b3, queen c7. Black was little surprised by a um, kind of a rush decision of white to play d5, although after bishop g4, rook a b1, b6, white position is still way better. Bishop g5, queen d6, rook f e1. Well, um, here black has played knight d7. Another option for black uh, was to take on f3 and after Bishop takes a free, try to avoid knight d2, which could have happened in the game. But yet one more time, uh, white is better. So yes, eventually, as mentioned uh, just before, here after knight d7, it would be a very interesting option for white to actually play knight d2 and uh, offer a, an exchange of the bishops after bishop takes e2, rook takes e2, Queen e5, f4, queen takes c3, bishop takes e7, rook e8. This is just horrible for black. Knight d2 is a very important move because, first of all, we offer an exchange of the bishops, but secondly, way more important, we take under control the c4 square. Another interesting option, which would also give an advantage for white, would be to take 
uh, inter account a der immediate c4 move. And after bishop takes f3, bishop or queen both take f3. Let's say bishop, bishop d4 looks very well for white, even uh, though black could have some practical chances uh, uh, due to the um, possibility of um, using d4 square for the pieces. Well, um, white would have tried to um, lure this uh, bishop out of this uh, square and even try to uh, win a pawn after bishop e3, queen f6. And now something like uh, rook b d1, and then later on try to win this pawn. But one should be aware of the fact that um, even if at some point we take this, we win this very pawn, there still will be c5 square, very important square for black. And uh, practically speaking, black could even sacrifice this pawn in order to get uh, the activity for his knight c5 square, and uh, use the fact that. Um, White's bishop is a uh, kind of um, um, bad place because of the same pawns on the same colors. This did not happen in the game. Actually, uh, this was a turning point here for white and for black, of course, as well, because, uh, uh, frankly speaking, after knight d7, white did a mistake. Bishop h4 was a very bad move. It did not feel right at all. Um, in fact, it is a certain mistake that ruins uh, all white's chances to dominate and provides black with a very clear way how to equalize. Let us have a look. Bishop f3, a very strong move that happened in the game. Bishop takes f3. Now c4, a wonderful pawn sacrifice which will eventually lead to a pawn exchange of both c pawns. Queen takes c4. Rook d c8, very nice um, way to uh, take back this c3 pawn. Uh, there is this minor detail because here obviously black has a choice whether to play rook d c8 or rook a c8. And the tiny little difference between those two is that after rook a c8, now there is a possibility for white to play queen b4, attack the queen. And in case of, for instance, bishop takes c3, double attack, by the way, queen takes d6, pawn takes d6, now bishop takes d8, bishop takes e1, bishop e7, bishop b4, bishop g4, and here the position looks very, very difficult for black. So this was the... Yeah, Mm, the explanation uh, uh, why Black has decided to uh, put the d8 rook into c8 square, which is rather not logic from uh, the first point, from the first glance, because uh, clearly we can uh, we can state that um, the d8 rook is already developed uh, when at the same time a8 rook is not yet uh, on a good spot. Although rook dc8 was the strongest move and it, uh, was, it was the move that happened in the game, after which black is completely fine. Queen a6, bishop takes c3. Uh, and here, what we need to know is that after rook e c1, knight c5, queen c4, bishop e5, so far black is very, very good. Bishop g3, rook c7. Here, bishop takes e5 uh, was kind of a forced move, because uh, if white doesn't do that, uh, he could be in a massive trouble. Queen takes e5, queen c3. Now, one more turning point uh, in this position for black, because uh, he had actually two options. One would be to go into the end game by exchanging the queens after queen takes c3. Another one would be to remain queens on board and play the move that happened in the game, which is queen g5. Let's have a look. If queen takes c3, rook takes c3, rook a c8, e5, white is just barely surviving here. But since he survives, he's absolutely fine because, you know, he has no material down or so. 
and eventually Sam was kind of afraid that this endgame would eventually end up into a drawish endgame. So that's why he decided to uh, continue play with queens on board. I should mention that uh, objectively speaking, uh, which is computer-wise speaking uh, or engine-wise speaking, this position is still uh, uh, better for black and would give black good chances to continue fight for win. Queen g5 uh, proceeded in the game. e5, rook a c8 is a little dubious move. Now, after d6, very strong move, trying to use the uh, past pawn and um, pawn adventure in the center, pawn majority, so to speak, in the center, since we have two pawns and black has only one. e takes d6, e takes d6, rook d7, rook d1, rook c d8, rook d5, attacking the queen, queen h6, rook b d1, queen f8 is a certain mistake for black because uh, now actually one more time uh, as it all started uh, white has an advantage and can actually have some even chances to win this game after rook f uh, sorry after queen f6 knight b7 the very last mistake very bad move for black because after a fabulous uh, rook 5d4 attacking the knight on b7 black is in a serious trouble and after queen g7 white had an option which would uh, guarantee win in this game this option is a uh, very very uh, not usual because it is kind of a sacrifice i invite you to um have a look the very last look before i uh give you a, an answer you can put the video on pause and uh try to find it by your own all right ready queen e7 a fantastic move that sacrifices the queen and actually uh, black cannot take it at all because after rook takes e7, d takes e7, rook e8, rook d8 and eventually e7 pawn will become a queen and after rook takes d8, e takes d8, queen, knight takes d8, rook takes d8, here black is obliged to give back his queen and after queen f8, rook takes f8, king takes f8, black is completely lost because uh, white is one bishop up. You can see that yourself on the board. You can ask uh, yourself what would be another option here for black. And actually, there is not such a mm, so so much choice because, for instance, you cannot play uh, queen f8 because there will be just bishop b7, and I'm one knight one piece up one more time. What else can you do here? Perhaps you can try to go for knight c5, but I will just uh, play bishop c6, attack your rook, and eventually my d6 pawn will become a queen. Black could have tried with knight a5, but still he would be completely paralyzed and after a couple of moves just to reinforce the position, something like h5, h4, our favorite move by the way, trying to uh, put some more pressure on black and grab some more space. For instance, h5, g3, king h7, Queen g5, as I mentioned earlier, black has nothing to do here, completely paralyzed. White is just about to put all his army into the fight and win the fight. Queen h6, queen b5, queen g7, and black is completely lost. All right, let us um, come back to the game. Uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, White did not use his chance, his very last chance. It was not the first one, but it was the last one uh, to fight for a win and uh, did not estimate uh, Queen E7 as a winning move. Eventually decided to proceed with uh, Queen takes G7 after King takes G7, Bishop takes B7, Rook takes B7, A4, B Rook BD7 f4, f5, rook d5, king f6, 
a5, b takes a5, rook takes a5, rook d6. The game finished in a draw. Well, Sam was considerably worse after the opening, the Grunfeld opening, and um, he was uh, kind of too much ambitious uh, by his um, choice in the opening because he he went to a bad position on purpose only to trying to create some fire on the board. Uh, as he mentioned later on, it was not um, reasonable at all. He regretted and uh, fortunately for him, his opponent Bogner playing with white seemed to be in a peaceful mood and uh, they ended up uh, splitting the point. That was the game from the round number six between Sebastian Bogner and Sam Shankland. Thank you for watching.